Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Word on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to be joining you this evening. I pray that you had a fantastic day and you are ready to hear what thus saith the Lord. Um, I just have a couple announcements and I'll make them brief and then we'll have a word of prayer and get started. Just a quick reminder that on December 6th, our Youth in Christ will be sponsoring the Polar Express, a night of lock-in for our children between the ages of 5 and to 17. Um, this event will be from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, if parents choose not to have their young people stay overnight, they are welcome to come pick them up in the evening. Um, the young people are excited and we are excited for them. Um, another announcement is we will have morning manor prayer tomorrow at, at 6 a.m. and prayer at 12 noon with Reverend Rhonda. Um, on next Wednesday, uh, we will not have Bible study. We want you to take the time to spend with family, friends, neighbors, and get that turkey in the oven. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Welcome to all of our guests joining us on Zoom and YouTube, Facebook Live. Um, at any time during our study tonight, please feel free to use the chat if you have questions comments, or uh, any concerns. Um, this conversation tonight, this teaching, is definitely going to be participation. I want you guys to ask questions, have discussion. Um, this topic is an on-time topic for right now. Um, how do we apply this topic to our daily, daily lives? Um, my topic tonight is hope for the hopeless. Um, and I have taken several scriptures from the Bible. Um, bear with me tonight. I am adjusting monitors and computers, um, but let us have a word of prayer before we get started. Heavenly Father, we bow right now to say thank you. Thank you for this day, oh God, and thank you for all of those that we have encountered on today. I pray, God, that whatever we've done during the day, that we were able to offer a kind word, that we were able to offer a blessing. But most of all, God, we thank you for how you've blessed us and how you've kept our families. We ask now during this season of Thanksgiving, oh Lord God, that we would be reminded to, to offer that Thanksgiving and that act of kindness back to the less fortunate. Thank you for how you've blessed us tonight, oh God, and thank you for our, our partners that have joined this Bible study. But most of all, God, thank you for our pastor as he is out tonight uh, preaching the word in Greensboro, North Carolina. Continue to cover him, oh Lord God, as he brings a word for the Thanksgiving holiday. We lift him up and we ask that you would be with him and be with us on tonight. It is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, that we say amen. Amen. As I mentioned, amen, and thank you for those that are joining um, at any time. If you can't hear me or see me, let me know, and I will adjust the monitor. Um, this topic the Lord gave to me a couple of days ago, and I said to myself, well, is this topic for everybody that's going to be on this study? And I was reminded that regardless where we are in our Christian journey, there are going to be times and seasons in our lives where we do feel that we're hopeless, or we may know someone that is in that state right now. Um, our focus scriptures for tonight, and I've got a few, and if you are a note taker like I am, I'm going to read it slow and and uh, just let me know if you need me to repeat anything. Um, Psalm 23 and 4. Uh, Psalm 68, 5 through 6. We're going to look at Matthew 11 and 28. Uh, Philippians 4, 6 through 7, Hebrews 13, 
5 through 6, 1 Corinthians 13 and 1, and then I jotted down Hebrews 11 and 1. Um, there are many, many scriptures um, that address faith and hope. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about how those two things um, oftentimes are discussed together. All right. Does anyone need me to repeat those scriptures? If not, I will move on. All right. What is hope? Of course, I went to the great old Webster Dictionary, and it said that hope is a feeling of expectation, a desire, a wish for something to happen. The biblical definition of hope is an expectation with certainty what God will do exactly what he said he was going to do. And let me say that again. Um an expectation with certainty what God will do, what he said he would do. And I don't know about you, but I believe that that biblical definition is what we stand on as believers. Um, hope is one of those things that during our lives, we find that we're in a state of hopelessness and not always knowing what to do. Um, one of the questions I want to pose tonight as we look at this study is, is hope tied with faith? Uh, no, it's not. Sin and hope are not the same thing in the Bible. Sin represents wrongdoing or transgressions against hope, against God. If we are in a state of hopelessness, then we're saying we don't trust God. We expect God to step in and be what our promises say he would be. Oftentimes, God is not pleased with us because we say we trust him, but we don't. Now, let me stop right here. How many times have you found yourself in a place of feeling either that you were uncertain or in a state of hopelessness and not certain what to do or even how to get yourself out of that state? I know sometimes if, if we're battling an illness or if we're battling family issues or if we're battling issues in our employment, sometimes we can fall in that pit of hopelessness. But the key thing that we're going to talk about tonight is how not to stay there, how not to feel as if we have no hope. Uh, anybody, I'm going to be asking questions, and if you guys want to chime in, Certainly feel free to do that. All right. So if we talk about hope and if it's tied together with our faith, I was speaking to one of my coworkers a few minutes ago and I shared a little bit about the lesson. And she said, you cannot have hope without faith. I'll say that again. You cannot have hope without faith. So those two things cannot reside in the same space. If I say that I have faith in Christ Jesus, then my hope ought to stand on him. And I think sometimes we're bombarded with the cares of the world, and we don't think that there's hope. We don't believe it. Um, you know, we've seen signs and wonders in our congregation over the past several months of healing, um, families being restored, uh, families being cured from cancer, all those things God has revealed to us as a sign of his promise to us. But if we find that even we take a glimmer of that hopelessness, then what we're saying is, that we don't have faith. Anybody want to comment on that tonight?
I'm going to keep an eye on the chat. So if, if anyone wants to drop something in the chat, certainly uh, feel free to do that. All right, I'm going to move on. Another question I looked at was, of what use is hope in the times of suffering? Um, a lot of times we think about suffering as long term. And hope and suffering, uh, it's okay for them to be aligned. But if you have hope, then the suffering is not something that God can't handle. Um, even when we're ill, and, and I can speak for myself over the years, I've had uh, several health issues, but I knew that God was with me even during the suffering, that even when I felt as if, you know, God, why is it I'm sick again? What's next? What else is gonna happen to this body? I sat back and I said, but God, because I knew that God was present, that he was there with me, even through this illness. So yes, we can hope for, for nothing less, but if we put our faith and our trust in Christ Jesus, then we are the victor. And I think that's what this lesson is all about tonight. But how should we respond in the eye of adversary, with adversity, excuse me, when we feel as if we have no hope? Um, I was led to Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Um, trust him. And I know sometimes that's hard. I thought about a few days ago as companies uh, were announcing their fourth quarter results and looking at the future. And in the same, same uh, news article, it talked about massive layoffs. Well, companies are becoming more and more successful, but yet they continue to lay off massive number of employees. People are looking for work. Oftentimes, they're led to move in the direction of employment that may not be what their, their profession is or maybe not even close to what their salary is. But they have to be the provider for their home, so they're required to take another position. And sometimes you take that with the intent, okay, I'll take this for now and later I can move on and, and be a blessing to my family. Um, so many people today struggle with discouragement and despair and hopelessness. Um, on January 20th, 2020, we experienced the first outbreak of COVID in the United States. I remember many people didn't believe that it even existed. They thought it was a hoax. So we began to see how this disease began to um, travel from state to state and city to city, and people began to take heed. Um, we began to wear masks. We began to put on gloves. Um, we stayed home. Uh, I think more of us began to order for deliveries, but we had to find a way to circumvent what was going on in our country at that time. Um, our children, they were not in school, so they had to work from home. I remember sitting up uh, at one of my kitchen tables, a computer for myself and one for my grandson. And then my granddaughter was in the front room. So we had to accommodate this situation. We didn't give up. There were days that uh, my grandson said, am I the only one at home? He felt isolated. And I know so many children did. So one morning I got up and I put him in a car and we drove around to his elementary school so I could show him that it wasn't just him, but the school was closed, that there was nothing there. That's why children were learning online. But they were faced with a, a, a part of an adversity that they couldn't understand. So we as a community had to pitch in and work around this. Um, 
we have experienced an increase in gun violence in our communities more than ever before. People are walking around with guns. Our schools have protectors. When you walk in, you're going through this uh, gun shield to make sure that no one's armed. Who would have ever thought we'd have that in our schools? Um, not only that, affordable health care. We're finding now that people can't afford their health care. What do we do to our seniors and our elders that have to decide this month, am I going to buy medication or buy groceries? Is there hope? They're concerned. They're wondering what's next. Even the outbreak of fentanyl. Young people across this country are dying from a drug that we don't even know where its origin is. Is there hope? People are feeling as if there is no hope. Sometimes it seems that this world is designed to suck everything out of us, every bit of life. And how do we face that? How do we first face those adversities? What is it that we have to do? Well, before I go any further, I'm going to share with you what I feel is the answer. And that answer has to be Christ Jesus. We have to continue to study the word of God and to use it as our foundation for our daily lives. Now, earlier in the conversation, I mentioned that a lot of us probably don't feel this way. Maybe we're not struggling with being that, uh, that having that feeling of hopelessness. But I'm here to tell you that maybe a family member, maybe a spouse, maybe one of your children, maybe a neighbor, a coworker, somebody is going through that feeling right now. And it is our opportunity to minister to them, to offer them Christ Jesus, to tell them that there is hope. And if we do that, I guarantee you that God will be pleased. Any comments or questions, I'm going to stop here because I am not going to talk tonight all night. I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear how you feel we can address this issue of hopelessness in our community, even right there in our congregation. Um, Anybody? Minister, yeah. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Well, this is a great, great topic. And um, I believe what you say. Um, I felt hopelessness, you know, in my life before. And um, first thing you said was the first thing that worked for me. And um, I couldn't trust my own self. I had mm -hmm. to have something greater than myself to believe in. You know, because we're fragile, we're human beings, and we we get our stimuli from what we see and what we hear. So for me, it had to be someone greater than myself that I believe was unaffected by what was going on in the world, that was more powerful than what was going on in the world. And that, of course, is Jesus Christ. And then the second thing that you said, having coming coming out of that period of hopelessness, hopelessness, whatever it may have been, to to spread the don't keep it to yourself, <laughs> to spread that good news that there is hope that no matter what it is that you're going through, put your trust and your care and the God of your understanding. And things are going to get better. Of course, you know, we're we're human beings and we want it done right then and right now. And I think that's another thing that keeps us in this hopelessness. You know, we 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 get up in the morning and we pray to God and um we go and we go about our day and we come home and everything is still the same. And we do that and we do that and we don't, you know. Uh, let patience have its perfect way. And that too tends to help us saying, this is not, this is not going on. But if we continue to go on, 
every day, continuing to have that faith and that trust and hope for better times. I am an example of that. It will, it will turn itself around and, and get around people who've been through some things and willing Amen. to share whatever it may be, because we're all sharing the hope and, and the faith that we have in, in God. And how we got over. We we sing it all the time. So uh, mm -hmm. that's great. That's uh, I think that is one of the remedies for hopelessness. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? You know, for many years, I, I was a volunteer. I volunteered um, in, in shelters and volunteered um, on suicide lines and for a long time, I had that attitude that I wanted to fix things. I wanted to make things better in people's lives. And I think for me, um, I had to step back for a minute and allow God to minister to me and let me realize that regardless of what I said or did, I had to make sure that I planted the seed of Christ in the individual that I was ministering to. That I was not the one to fix it. Um, I have no credentials in counseling. I, I've had some credentialing in pastoral care, but I've never been able to say to someone, I can fix you. And I think in as much as we look at broken homes, broken marriages, uh, the Black family separating. We can't fix it. We've got to turn this thing over to Christ Jesus. And I think when we leave him out, we do a disservice to our people. Um, I would love to say that I can fix families. I can fix women that are in shelters. I can't do that. I can only go to Christ on their behalf. And he said, if you plant that seed, he'll do the rest, right? So it is our obligation, our desire today, even right now, that we realize that we can't fix it. When we have people that come to our church, come to our homes and talk to us about the state of hopelessness that they're feeling, immediately, immediately send them to the word open that Bible and, and point to them what God says about faith. It is our faith that will keep us, that will sustain us, and that will bring us out of hopelessness. Again, because that is an emotion. Um, and I'm not saying that it's anything wrong, because I'm the first one to admit there were times in my life, just like Pastor that, that I had to go to a therapist because one, again, I tried to fix it and it didn't work. And I knew as time went on that I was in the state of not fixing anything, but I was hurting and I couldn't, I couldn't understand why. So even today during this Thanksgiving season, I want us to be reminded that there are people that will not sit at the table with their families. Um, and I thank God for, for the initiative that we're doing to help feed those um, uh, church family and friends that don't have a meal. Um, and I thank God that we can go to him on behalf of others. Um, when I looked at sharing about this hopelessness, um, Another one of my coworkers said, well, I felt that way after the election. Um, I didn't feel hopelessness. I felt disappointment. But I knew that the God that we serve was greater than any election, regardless if it was the right person that won or the wrong person. Regardless who sits in the White House, there is a God that sits above all houses. And he is going to take care of us even through this season. Um, anyone else want to share? I am going to work my magic on my computer. <laughs> uh, one reason God gave us the Bible was to provide encouragement when we're in those low points of life. 
Um, I looked at King David and looked and how he looked to God as the source of real hope and comfort, uh, where he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me, as recorded in Psalm 23 and 4. Anybody have a question? I'm sorry. Um, David also writes about the loving care God offers to the downtrodden and the vulnerable. A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitat. God sets the solitary in family. Psalms, Psalm, excuse me, 68, 5 through 6. Um, if you look at those particular verses, it reminds us that in the word, we can seek hope. Um, my, my grandson had the opportunity the other week, one of my neighbors and dear friends who actually visit um, Redeeming Love a couple of Sundays ago, gave him his first Bible. And uh, as he flips through the Bible, he says to me, well, what's the most important part in the Bible? And I said, you start at Genesis and you work your way to the end to Revelation and every bit of that is important. But what you have to do is find a place in the word for any situation you're in. And how many of you know that our children daily are faced with situations in school? Um, so I reminded him, even where there's bully, even where there's confusion, there's a word that speaks to that. So now we're going to those places in the Bible that young people can go to and look for answers and, and look for solutions to some of the things uh, that they're facing daily. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The Bible says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Um, Matthew 11 and 28 uh, reads that. And if you know anything about the weight that sometimes we carry on our shoulders when we're burdened with the cares of the world, it can get heavy. But in the word, there is hope, there is peace, there is love, there is joy. And those things are what Christ Jesus offers us during those times. Uh, the Apostle Paul describes wonderful peace of mind that God can provide when he says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, free thing. By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understandings, will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Um, Philippians 4, uh, 6 through 7. And I'm often in that scripture. And, and sometimes... I have to just take a couple of words out of that and, and remind myself that everything, that not some things, but everything. And even when we talk about hopelessness, that's something. Um, we can go to him in prayer and in supplication. And we can go on behalf of those that say they don't know the Lord. Um, I'm going to stop right here for a minute and open the floor for questions, comments, concerns. Um, I, I don't want to uh, turn this into a mini sermonette. This is a study. And I believe studies ought to have discussions. So anybody, the floor is open. The way it the Adrian, I think you bring out some very good points because in reality, all of us have had moments that Sister Yvette was talking about. We all have come to a place in our lives, if we're not, if we're past three, that things just didn't go the way we wanted them to go, or they didn't look the way that we anticipated they would look. And if it's if journeys too long, it does become heavy. Every, and it mm -hmm. doesn't say to to the to the believer that you 
or not believing God. It just is a reminder that this is a moment where I need to indulge in him more. Um, I, and I also think that this is a time where we have to be able to with to withdraw the word of God from within ourselves to help us bounce back so we can give back to God what his word says to us. And as we are doing that, even in our weakest moments, um, it tends to make us have hope renewed. It tends to Amen. restore the joy. It tends to bring up a, a, a satisfying kind of peace with the assurance that God's going to take care of me because his word promises that he would never leave me. His word promises he'll never forsake me. His word says he will be my provider. His word says that I will be the head and not the tail. But you go on and on. Just as he's ministering to you and it's coming out, up and out of, not you, but us, as it's us, coming up absolutely. and out of us, it, it makes the biggest difference. I have to say, uh, I'm a witness today that that is truth. Uh, you know, sometimes I have, a you know, well, today I had a really yucky day and I had to come out of it. He pulled me out of it by saying, but don't you trust me? And as he said, don't you trust me? Then all the the word came back up into my being and I could come out of, he brought me out of it with this word. I don't know that things are going to, like you said, I can't fix it. I don't know when things are going to change, but his word promises me that it will. So I think we have to be realistic. Uh, we can be saved, but we certainly have to be realistic about what we're feeling when we're feeling it and don't stay there too long. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I, I think the key thing that I've heard tonight from several of you is that even when we're in that place, that we can't stay there. We can't fester in that place of hopelessness. Um, his His word says that we have to go to him when we're feeling like that. It, you, you know, sometimes we feel like we're so low in the in the valley that he can't reach down and pick us up. Um, and that's when we ask for forgiveness. Um, sometimes it requires us to humble ourselves in his presence. And I think even as I was looking at this study, I was reminded over and over again that sometimes we falter because we don't ask him for help. We don't reach out and, and say, Lord, I need you right now. Uh, not in a few minutes, but I need you right now. This situation warrants your presence right now. Even sometimes when we're praying for someone at the altar, oftentimes I say, God, they need you right now. And we serve an on-time God that he hears our prayers right now. And I'm grateful uh, that he does because when I pray to him, I'm expecting him to hear. And I'm believing that he will. And even right now, when I think about so much that's going on in this country um, and right here in our communities, the God that we serve will not allow his people to stay in that place of hopelessness but so long. But I want to share a few minutes about those who don't know him and how we can effectively minister to them, even when they come into our churches, when they come into the, the supermarket. Um, I, I think, I don't remember who it was that said the other day, that might have been my neighbor, that does her best ministry in the supermarket. And we don't know who we're going to meet on any given time. And if our faces are turned up and twisted, we're not approachable. But I believe even if we're going through something, if people can see the Christ in us, that can offer hope to anyone. Um, even in times of hardship and pain, people still need to hear from us. They need to hear that there is a savior that delivers and sets the captives free. And part of what we need to do in our, in our ministries and in our churches is to remember that 
We're all at different stages in our walk, in our journey. And maybe you're not comfortable to stop somebody in the market and say, uh, hey, sister so-and-so, how you doing? You okay? And if they say no, are you prepared to pray with them right there? Maybe not. But tell them, I'm concerned for you. I'm going to add you to my prayer list. Tell them that I'm thinking of you, that you're not alone. Um in 2022, the suicide rate amongst young, young people had been the highest it had ever been. Part of that was because of the isolation due to COVID. And part of that was uh, bullying and social media and so many things that attracted young people to those applications. Applications where they could read what everybody was thinking about them and feeling about them. A lot of times young people took that to heart and they didn't have anybody to talk to. So when I heard about the Polar Express locked in and 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 how our young people were going to be in a safe place between ages of five and and 17 that there they would have the opportunity to share and and talk about what's going on in their lives because sometimes young people share with their parents and they don't want to talk to us but they might want to talk to each other so i pray that that uh that ministry event will be successful and that god would show up and show out amongst our children um and that they too could feel that there is hope in this world um the author of hebrews sums it up when he says, for he himself has said, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. With assurance, we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Hebrews uh, 13, 5 through 6. The hope that the Bible describes is not uh, a dream or, or vaguely a mere wish, but it is a solution to everyday life. Um, if you take a look at um, what's going on in our communities, right now people are preparing to be in isolation. Uh, people have lost loved ones this year, and we pray for those that are going through the grieving process. Uh, people has lo have lost homes, people have lost jobs, and the first reaction is that they go into isolation. So it is my prayer that they come towards Christ and not away. And so if you know of anyone that fits that, that, uh, that is in that position right now, I pray that you would open your heart and minister to them and offer them prayer. Um, it is not what we want. We want our people to be in a place that their faith will renew them, um, will restore them, and allow them to believe that there is hope. But that hope stands on Christ Jesus, and for that, we're so grateful. Um, let's talk. Let's have a, a conversation. Anybody, um, tell me what your thoughts are on this this hopelessness topic. Where do you feel we are as a Christian community right now and how we can better address our community at large? Well, good evening to Minister Adrian and to everyone on Zoom and Facebook. Uh, Minister Adrian, what a powerful topic and what a timely topic uh, mm -hmm. as we go into the holiday season and um, people have lost loved ones. People are struggling financially, uh, mentally, uh, physically, and spiritually. Yes. And I am so grateful that uh, God has written the prescription to what ails us in those 66 books. Yes. Amen. That, um, I mm. love the, the litany of scriptures that... Um, have come out of the lesson. And um, it's just like it says that when our heart is overwhelmed, uh, the word says to lead us to the rock that is higher than I, than I. So whenever, whatever ails us, 
the prescription to it is in the word of God. Um, I'm so grateful that Jesus came before us. So whatever, how we feel, whatever we're going through, he has already experienced that. So, uh, you know, like Sister Janice, uh, Minister Janice said, you know, uh, you know, I had a day today. And, and you know what? Jesus had a day. And so he can identify with where you are. But have, have you ever noticed that it is at those times when you are struggling the most that you feel God's presence the strongest? It is it's at that time when we're going through things that we see those footprints and we think they are ours, but it is in God that is carrying us. It is in those times that deep down within us, the word swells up like a geisher and it comes up that tells us that no matter what's going on, everything is going to be all right. Uh, but, you know, it, it's like the song says, if, if we didn't have a little rain sometimes, then we would never appreciate the sunshine. If, if we didn't have a little pain sometimes, we wouldn't realize that God is the healer that he says he is. If, if we didn't have things to go on, we would never know that the scripture is true, that every bit of it is working together for our good. Um, I'm, I'm so grateful uh, for, you know, the word that it has hope. Now, do we feel on the mountain every day? No, we don't. But like you said, that's why David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death, that Lord, you're with me. Um, and I'm going to get to the other side. I, I may have to struggle a little bit, but I'm going to get to the other side of it. So, as being a Christian, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful that I'm just in relationship with God and that I can run to the word or run to the saints that know the power of prayer to encourage me when I'm not in Amen. a place that I can, you know, encourage myself. I'll always uh, insulate yourself with the saints of God that even when you can't verbalize what's going on with you. They got good discernment like the old saints used to. And they can read you like a book and say, sister, <laughs> what's going on with you? Come on. Amen. Let me love you through this. Let me pray for you to get you to the other side of it. So what a, what a timely, what a timely word tonight. Uh, this is just blessing my soul so much. And I don't want to take up all of the time. I'm just excited right now. And um, just know that uh, God is doing something through this word tonight. Amen. Thank you, Executive Pastor Dobbin. And we miss you. I pray that you're feeling better and we'll see you soon. Um, amen. You know, amen. there's something about um, being able to call on the name of the Lord. Um, there were uh, times when I went on mission trips and and people would pray in silence or people would have baptisms in bathtubs and hotels because as Christians, they were not allowed to pronounce their faith. Um, they they worship God in secrecy. Um, even baptism was done in secrecy. secrecy. But I'm grateful tonight that that we have an opportunity to serve God in the fullness of our hearts. We don't have to hide. We don't have to worry about any backlash from praising the Lord. Um, we don't even have to worry that someone is going to hear us call on the name of the Lord. I want someone to hear me because I want my worship to be able to to make someone realize that the God that we serve is awesome and that this God that we serve is real. Um, any other comments or questions? Thank you guys so much um, for your attentiveness and your patience tonight. Um, I pray that, that this topic 
Um, like I said at the beginning, if if you don't feel that you've in, in that place of hopelessness, maybe there's someone you know that needs to hear that our God is ever present and he will see us through um, during this time. Anything else? I've adjusted my monitors a little bit today. Um, so if you see me looking over, <laughs> it's because I can't see my, my last line. Um, any other comments or concerns? There was one last line I had. I think I'll, I think we're fine there. Um, any other questions, any announcements? I see that uh, the deacon of the, uh, the, the chairman of the deacon board is on. Are there any other announcements at this time that maybe I've missed um, at the beginning of the call? Anybody? I uh, want to address anything else. All right. If you are led this evening to give an offering to this ministry, um, we ask that you give no less than $20. And you know of all the multiple ways you can give through Giveify, uh, through Cash App. Um, you can send it through the postal service and you can drop it off at the church. I pray that the word um, bless you this evening and that um, during this holiday season that you be reminded of the less fortunate and that you offer them hope in Christ Jesus. Amen. Um, Minister Wander, is there anything else other than me closing out in prayer that I need to do? I want to make sure. Uh, yes, Since this is my first time. Uh, you did an amazing job. To God be the glory Thank for you. you and for an awesome lesson. Uh, Reverend Denise, do you have anything uh, before um, Minister Adrian closes out? Uh, no, ma'am. I think she's already gone over the announcements. Uh, just a great lesson. Um, we're so proud of you. Your first time. And you oh, did an thank awesome you. You did an awesome, awesome job, and thank all of you for your attentiveness. Mm -hmm. And just thank so you. everyone knows that, uh, as uh, Minister Adrian said, Pastor is preaching at Equation Church. Um, you can watch it live on Facebook or on their website. I do have it in the chat, and we'll add it to, it's on our Facebook page as well, if you want to watch him virtually. And that's all that I have. And if I may, uh, Minister Adrian, this is uh, Chris Best. Um, hey. uh, awesome job. And thank you for this powerful message that you have presented this evening that God has led you to teach. Um, it is very timely. Um, as Reverend Dobbins stated, you know, we're about to go into the holiday season um, and we're talking about hope and faith uh, in God. So um, very powerful. Thank you so much. And uh, again, thank, thank you. each and every one of you for joining this evening as well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? And of course, we're going to lift our pastor in prayer um, for him tonight. And uh, we know that the church will be changed because of the word that he's going to bring forth tonight in the name of Jesus. Will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we bow this evening just to say thank you. Father, during this season of Thanksgiving, we look to you, God, so that you can be a provider for those that are in a state of hopelessness. We ask, God, that you would speak to them clearly, that you would be a company keeper for those that are lonely, that you would be a comforter for those that are hurting. God, that you would speak to their heart right now, wherever they might be. God, we pray a special blessing over our pastor. We ask, God, that you would just give him what he needs to bring forth the word tonight with a spirit of boldness, God, and that the souls that are gathered in that place and online, that they might receive the word and be doers of the word. Let that word bless and keep them. 
Father, we pray for our executive pastor, Dobbin. We ask that you would continue to touch and heal her body. We thank you for all of those that have gathered this evening on this Bible study. We ask God that you would just prepare our hearts for this holiday season. Allow us to be reminded of all the things that we're thankful for, that we don't take anything for granted. We love you, Lord. We honor you. But most of all, we celebrate you. Thank you, Father, for what you've done for us and what you're about to do for us. Thank you for that place called Redeeming Love, oh God. Thank you for our partners, for our friends and community. We ask that you would bless the other churches as they continue to go through this holiday season of Thanksgiving be with our families, and we ask for protection for them as they travel from far and near. Keep them safe, O oh God, and bring them back to us safely. We lift this prayer on high tonight in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord, and we do say amen and praise God. Amen. Good night, everyone, and thank you so much for joining. God bless you. Good night. God bless. Good night.